Hi everyone, this is Erin from Sandpaper Road and I am so excited to show you today this amazing idea. It is a stamp set and die set from Creek Bank Creations and they're long. So I made this card and this is a regular number 10 business size envelope and this card with made with these dies and the stamps fits, watch this, directly, if I just smush the bow, right into a regular business envelope. Now, of course, if you're sending something with a bulky bow, you'd have to be mindful of that. But if you're just giving it as a gift, or if you're a scrapbooker and you don't have too many card making supplies, this might be a great place to start. So I'm going to show you this neat um, card today and we'll make this with these products here. And I love it so much. Isn't it beautiful? Oh my goodness. So let's get started. I just wanted to thank Creek Bank Creations for providing the stamp and die for product review. I will put links below in the description box where you can purchase these. It is so worth it. I've never seen anything like this on the market before. And I just want to point out some things you may not be able to tell from the video at first, but this is a regular A2 size top folding card. And when I lay it here, you can see the obvious size difference in the stamp um, and the die set both. You get six stitched rectangle dies, nesting dies in the set. And then this is the stamp up close. And it says, even in the worst storms, if you look, you can find light. And I bet you are thinking of someone who loves lighthouses. So neat. I cannot wait to play. Now, I do want to show you about getting your card bases ready. Okay. So let me move that out of the way. This is the regular Sizzix or Big Shot or whatever you have, the regular patterns. I, I did not think about this until I just started to make this, but you're going to have to be mindful of the size um, of your dies. I have the extended set, which works the extended platform and the extended um, plates. So, and then that would work probably better with all the sizes. Not to say that this wouldn't work. I just, I'm not sure about how it would cut if you were using the largest one uh, versus the other ones. So I'm really going to recommend the extended platform and plates. And again, there'll be links in the description box where you can purchase all these items first. Now you could do this two ways. What you could do is just, uh, I'll show you what I did on, the, on one. You could really just fold or score. Let's do it this way. All right, so my halfway mark, you know, is about four and a quarter. Okay, this is a regular eight and a half by 11 cardstock. Um, it's uh, cardstock by Stampin' Up. I love their cardstock. And you could just uh, just do a score right here, fold, okay, and fold a regular sheet in half. Then what you can do is take the largest die. This is why I brought up the idea about the extended platform. You could take the largest die and line it up just so that one side is off of the fold and tape it down with just like a piece of washi tape or something. I always keep like a little piece here. Okay. Just like that on your plate. Now see, see how that's not quite on the fold, but the other one is. Then when you run it through, um, it will leave the fold intact and cut it out and you'll have it cut as such. Okay. The other way to do it would be just simply to trim it to size. And so let's see, you would cut this. This is a, a different way. If you didn't want that stitch around, because notice how this stitch has three sides of a stitch, but then the folded side doesn't. Um, if you didn't want that look, then what you could do is cut your 
paper at, or your cardstock at eight, if this is eight and a half by 11, cut a half inch off the edge and then turn it and cut it at nine. Okay, and then you can score it at four. Let me get this out of the way. At four inches, like a regular card. Okay, and when you fold like this, then you'll have a card base like this. Okay, and both of the card bases um, fit inside the number 10 envelope just perfectly. And I made them different colors just so you could see this was the one with the stitch and the other one was not. This is on the base, okay. There, there we go. Okay, isn't that nice? Super handy. So that is up to you. You can see that there is a slight difference if you cut it to a four by nine size card or if you use the largest die. I mean, it's just a slight difference. Really, I would think that the preference would be more in uh, how you want the end result card to look. And for example, then when you're using the next size die to cut you know, your next panel, um, do you want it to look like this or like this? It's, it's completely up to yourself. I think that both of them look awesome. But again, take a look here. You know, if you're gonna use this, then you've got stitch and stitch. That looks amazing. Or you've got plain and stitch, which looks equally amazing. Okay, so that's just a start. For the next part of the card, I put a piece of Georgia Pacific white cardstock down in my Tim Holtz stamping platform, and I'm using Memento Tuxedo Black ink. Uh, I had to stamp it a few times just because it's a larger stamp, but overall, it really did stamp really well. Um, and I'm not really one to use voice overs and sped up videos but I thought that was the best option for this one just because there were so many steps and especially for this part uh, with the coloring and I am using Spectrum Noir markers and I will put the colors I tried to put the color caps up in the corner but sometimes they kind of were turned upside down so uh, you can look and see the colors I added them as text to the coloring and I tried to add a little bit of shading. I tend to use four colors when I'm using my markers, going in with the second lightest one first. And then I go in gradually darker and darker. And at the very, very, very last step, I go back over and color everything with the lightest color that I chose of the four. So that's what I'm doing right now is going back over with the lightest in just that little section. And then I repeat it again, so you can see when I do it up top, this is the second lightest that I start with. And then I go in with the next darkest. So out of the four colors that I chose to do that little section. And then I go in with the darkest one of the four. And the final step would be a final coat of the total lightest of the four that I chose. That's just the way I do it. I know a lot of people have kind of their own methods, but that's the one that works for me. This is just a little bit of light, light, light gray, and I'm just offsetting around the same side that I put the dark shade of the red. I'm choosing to do the light gray also on the other side. At the very top, I'm using the darkest gray I had because my black actually ran out of ink and I don't have a re-inker for it yet. And then I went in around the gate type thing uh, with just one color. I didn't really worry about shading. And if this coloring part is boring you, you could uh, skip ahead, certainly, to the next part of the video. And um, you could see where I start to sort of put the card together. I use that same color for uh, down in the house, but again, with the four color choice, going in with the second lightest color first, and then gradually going darker, darker, darker. And I'm mindful to, if I'm gonna shade on, uh, make making everything kind of darker on the right side, 
of the lighthouse and the right, then I have to do it on the right side of the little house and cabin. Now this sun and the water, I actually wasn't too, too satisfied with my end result at first, but once I got it on the card, I was like, that looks not too bad. So I did my orange, orangish colors and my yellow colors on the sun and then went in with sort of a funny blend of light purples and and again I'll put those colors right up there on the screen so you can see starting with my second lightest and then going in a little darker and darker and darker and I'm just trying to accent those lines of the stamp that are already there then I realized there was water on the other side of the lighthouse that I forgot completely about so I had to go back and and uh, fill that in. And the one thing with Spectrum Noir markers that um, I do like is I like that there's the fine tip and the bullet tip. Or I mean a fine tip and the um, like a thick tip uh, so you can choose. Um, I also like that um, they're pretty accessible if you have your big box stores nearby, you know, your pack of tans, your Hobby Lobby, that kind of thing. You can always go in and pick up a pack of markers, um, especially with a coupon. You can also get them online pretty, pretty inexpensively too. And if you're not sure about alcohol markers, I think this is a great place to start just because of that fact that they're relatively inexpensive and you can practice. So then as I was going in, this I do have to mention. I was doing the bottom of the lighthouse with the grays and doing the stones and I so wanted to use some sort of, it was right here in my mind that I thought, oh, I totally wish I had like a stone paste, some kind of gritty type texture paste that was that color. And I almost stopped the video to do it and add it in. As a matter of fact, later while this was setting and, you know, I was, it was like a day later or whatever, I went in and went in with some crackle paste and thought that that might look good instead on a totally different stamped image. It did not look like how I thought it would. So I just stuck with my original idea. And then I did all the greens as well with the same thing. I started with a second. I chose four colors and then the second lightest one I uh, did first over the whole surface and then went in gradually darker, darker, darker over just the edges and the accents and finally filling uh, the entire thing in with the lightest color over top. It took a little bit of practice and I also want to mention that I didn't choose my colors all in order like you know, it wasn't the green one, two, three, and four. It was just whatever greens I thought would look best. And um, it was just my choice. As a matter of fact, in my practice one, it looked a lot brighter, but I chose this for this one. Then I went in with the die and um, this would be the third sized die inside because I already used the, uh, that was the second largest die in the blue. And then I have my base there. So I knew it was gonna go like that. And then I was trying to decide if I should stamp my sentiment directly on the white or on a separate piece of paper and mount it on top. And I decided to just go ahead with the separate piece. And I had my scrap right there from where I used, from where I, or from where I die cut out the lighthouse. And I thought that would be fine. What I didn't do was rubbed the stamp with my hand first and it really was sticky and I just forgot to rub it so it just conditioned the stamp a little bit or like with a baby wipe or just something and I'm using Ranger archival ink in coffee I believe and it's a really really nice brown but again it was the first time I'd ever used that stamp and it stamped fine I just had to do it a few times just because I wasn't pushing very well. It wasn't the stamps issue, it was more of a user issue. And I had these oval uh, dies in my stash. 
So I cut out the oval die, or I mean the oval sentiment with one, it's a scallop die. And then I cut out, um, it was some sort of, uh, I think so saffron paper from Stampin' Up that I cut out the next graduating step up in the same oval scallop die. Now that I went to mount it and the something, it just needed something and I didn't know what, it just looked too funny. So I found this, it's like a map type stamp, a background stamp in my stash. And I thought if I could just give that, maybe just the, yeah, that was so saffron, it sure was. If I could just give that yellow cardstock, that so saffron cardstock, a little bit of life before I added the sentiment to it, I thought that would be nice. So I just stamped that, it's like a map type, like a nautical image uh, onto that. I really liked that a lot. And I know you wouldn't see much of it because I was covering it up with the sentiment anyway, but I just wanted something so that it wasn't just plain, plain, uh, plain uh, solid colors, one after the other. When I was going to put the cardstock together, I realized that when I was coloring it in marker, just the way I had positioned the stamp on the paper, I cut it in such a way that it just, I had this big white gap and oh, I didn't want to get out my markers again. So I thought, oh, maybe I can cover it up with a little piece of ribbon. And I, I thought that's a really nice color ribbon because I wasn't really trying to like add ribbon to the card, have it be one of those ribbon type cards, but I really didn't want to have that big white gap either. I weaved the ribbon around and around on my fingers to make a triple bow and I'll do, I've got to do a video about that sometime because it's a really neat technique. And then trimmed off the edges and then I will just attach the bow separately and making it appear like I wrapped it all the way around and did all this fancy bow work, which I really didn't. I just did the bow separate. Then if I mess up on the bow, I can always redo it and nobody will ever know. And I'm just using my ATG gun to uh, adhere it to my cardstock glue dots for the ribbon. This is the point where I looked at the C, the marker work, the coloring that I had done on the water, and I thought that looks kind of good now. And the bow sort of um, covers up any, I'm going to say weirdness that the markers may have made it look. It wasn't the markers, it was just my color combination of choice. And then I adhered the sentiment on top of the yellow cardstock and found a piece of fun foam, which I will put a link in the description box for this fun foam. It is really uh, handy to have on hand. It's only adhesive on one side, which makes it very easy to store. And you can use, I always save all those trimmings for the tiniest, tiniest little things. And it makes no difference if you're using a super bright color because it's underneath. And it's really, really inexpensive for a lot of sheets. Now, the part where I put the ribbon, it kept coming up and it was bothering me. So I'm sure that's happened to you a bunch of times where you think you've got something stuck down really securely and then it just sort of flips up. So I had to add more tape after that. And I wanted the sentiment with the scallop to hang off of the edge, but and then I was going to turn the card over and cut off the excess. And that plan was going to work just fine. I thought I had estimated the sentiment just right, so I adhered the card, and I bet you know what's coming next. Well, when I adhered the card to the cardstock, and I was all pleased, and you know, I'm sure this has happened to you before, you think you're almost done, and it's looking wonderful, and right here, I thought, oh, this is going to be great, and when I turned it around, I had cut off just the tiniest bit of the sentiment. So I pulled off the white part and re-stamped it and recut it and just reapplied it. I was a little disappointed, but it was a super, super easy fix. And then my uh, last step was to trim off that excess. And I think that looks beautiful. And then I adhered that bow with a glue dot. I was really glad that I went ahead and added that bow. I think it added a lot of balance to the card. Here's a close-up of what the bow looks like. 
I also went back in with some Distress ink and some White Nouveau Crystal Drops after the fact. The ink I just added along the edges of the card and the Nouveau Crystal Drops I added here and there just for some final touches. Uh, here is a close-up of also of the lighthouse part where I added a sequin to the top to give the illusion of the light. And another close-up where you can see the nautical stamp and the raised image with the foam. And here's the finished card. I like the way it looks. And I also like the way it fits perfectly inside a number 10 business envelope. That is just outstanding to me. And the stamps and the dies are from Creek Bank Creations. The links are in the description box along with other links to Sandpaper Road on social media. But you can visit sandpaperroad.com to visit the blog and to shop. And thanks so much for subscribing to Sandpaper Road on YouTube. See you next time. Bye-bye.